Hello and welcome to Marketing91.com. By definition, the demand for money is the desired holding of financial assets in the form of money, that is, cash or bank deposits. There are three approaches to demand for money. Classical approach, neoclassical approach and Keynesian approach. Let's understand each of these approaches in detail. First is the classical approach. According to classical economists, people demand money for transaction purposes, that is, to carry out their economic transactions over a period of time. The main aspects of the classical approach are Money is demanded as a means of payment. The amount of money demanded depends on the volume of transactions and price levels. The change in the velocity of circulation of money changes the quantity of money demanded. The classical approach can be explained in terms of Fisher's equation of exchange, that is, MV equals PT, where M is the money supply, V is transaction velocity of money, P is the price level and T refers to transactions, PT is demand for money and MV is supply of money. According to the neoclassical approach, people wish to hold on to a certain proportion, K, of national output in the form of money. There exists a proportional relationship between the demand for money, MD, and the money value of national output. The demand for money can be expressed as MD equals KY, where MD is the demand for money, K is the constant proportion of Y, and Y is money value of national output. For example, if the value of national output Y is rupees 1 lakh billion and people wish to hold a part of this income K worth rupees 25,000 billion in the form of money, then the value of K is 1 divided by 4. Keynes' approach to determine the demand for money is based on money's two important function, medium of exchange and store of value. Keynes lists the following three motives for holding money. Transactions motive which includes income motive and business motive, precautionary motive and speculative motive. Let's start with transaction motive. This motive refers to the demand for money by the public for making engaging in transactions of all kinds. The amount of money held for the transactions motive depends on the following factors. Level of income, time interval, price level and volume of employment. The transaction's motive is further classified as follows. Income motive. It refers to the transaction's demand for money by earners of wages and salary to carry out transactions of all kinds such as rent payments and electricity bill payments. Money held for this purpose declines over the income interval period, the income at the end of the period being zero. For example, an employee receives a salary of rupees 20,000 every month. His monthly expenses include rent, food, movies, books and stationery. In the first month, he deposits rupees 20,000 in the bank. The money is withdrawn for various purposes and the account runs down to zero over the course of the month. Business motive. It refers to the demand for money by business firms to carry out their day-to-day -day transactions such as payment of electricity bills, rent, raw materials and wages. The money held by the firm declines over a period of time. For example, Uber has raised USD 11.5 billion in capital up to 2016. It is raising funds for fuel global expansion to prepare itself for the rising number of regulatory battles and for its aggressive price cutting and marketing promotions. Precautionary motive refers to the desire of people to hold on to cash balances for unforeseen contingencies such as sickness and accidents. Similarly, Businessmen keep cash in reserve to survive unfavorable conditions or to gain from unexpected deals. The transactions and precautionary motives of holding money are primarily influenced by level of income. For example, an earning member of a nuclear family may invest in an LIC life insurance product to cover his or her risks and unforeseen events. Thus, in the event of his or her death, his or her family will receive the maturity amount. Keynes combined the transactions and precautionary demand for money, which can be expressed as L1 is the function of Y, where L is demand for money due to transactions and precautionary motives, and Y is the income. The equation shows that L1 is a function of income, that is, the demand for L1 may change with a change in income level. 
the demand for money for transactions in precautionary motives is inelastic. The ML1 line indicates that the transactions in precautionary demand for money is unaffected by changes in the rate of interest. The transactions in precautionary demand for money is known as the demand for active cash balances. The last motive is speculative motive. Speculative simply means guessing the change in value of assets to make profits. It relates to the desire to hold on to one's resources in liquid form to take advantage of future changes in the interest rate or bond prices. It is called asset demand for money and is related to the store of value function of money. It is income elastic. At a higher rate of interest, less money is held for this motive and vice versa. The changes in the market rate of interest and security price can be expressed as P equals R by M into N, where P is market price of security, R is return on the security, M is the market rate of interest, and N is the original price of the security. For example, if R is 10% and M is 15%, then P equals 0 0.10 by 0 0.15 into 100, which equals 66.66. .66. For example, Mr. X wants to invest in bonds. At an interest rate of 2%, he will get Rs. 1,020 in a year's time in exchange for Rs. 1,000 in cash now. That is, by buying a bond that pays Rs. 1,020 in a year now. However, he expects or speculates the interest rate to rise from 2% to 10% shortly. At 10%, investing Rs. 1,000 in cash now will get him Rs. 1,100 in a year's time. Hence, Mr. X holds on to the money until the rate increases to 10% and then decides to invest. People do not hold on to cash when the rate of interest is high because the opportunity cost of holding idle cash is high. Security prices at the time of high interest rates are low, which induces investors to purchase them. Thus, the speculative demand for money depends on the rate of interest, that is, L2 is a function of R where L2 is the speculative demand for money and R is the rate of interest. L2 and R are inversely related. The speculative demand for money, LP, and its relationship with interest rates can be diagrammatically expressed as LP is measured on the x-axis and interest rate is denoted on the y-axis. At interest R, only OM quantity is demanded. At a lower interest, that is R dash and R double dash, OM1 and OM2 quantities are demanded respectively. Point T onwards, the demand for LP becomes perfectly elastic. This situation is known as a liquidity trap. At a low rate of interest, the speculative demand for money becomes perfectly elastic, which results in a liquidity trap. X-axis represents demand for money, whereas rate of interest. 2% is considered to be the lowest rate below which the market rate of interest would not decline. Up to point T, the L2 curve is sloping downwards up to point T, indicating an inverse relationship between the speculative demand for money and the market rate of interest. At point T, the L2 curve becomes horizontal and the horizontal part of the curve shows the liquidity trap. This explains the perfectly elastic speculative demand for money. At such a low interest rate, people prefer to hold on to cash instead of purchasing bonds because of the fear of an imminent decline in bond prices. The total demand for money is expressed as MD equals L1 of Y plus L2 of R, where MD is the demand for money, L1 of Y is demand for money due to transactions and precautionary motives, both being an increasing function of income level and L2 of R is demand for money due to speculative motive, a declining function of interest rate. In Keynesian terms, the total demand for money can be expressed as follows. MD equals L of YR. The total demand for money can be diagrammatically explained as Figure 1 shows OM, the transactions and precautionary demand for money at Y level of income and varying interest rates. Figure 2 shows the speculative demand for money at varying interest rates and figure 3 shows the total demand curve for money. It represents the liquidity preference schedule of the community. Moving on, there are four determinants of the demand for money. Price level, income, interest rate and velocity of circulation of money. 
the first determinant is price level. Assuming full employment and a constant volume of transactions, the demand for money depends on the price level. Relaxing the assumption of full employment, the demand for money is determined by the price level P and the volume of transactions T, that is PT. Next is income. The transactions in precautionary demand for money depends on income. Higher the income, the more is the money held for such motives and vice versa. Next is interest rate. When people hold on to cash, idle balance, they incur an opportunity cost in terms of foregone interest. The demand for investment in various assets depend on the interest rate. The demand for money for motives other than transactions and precautionary is a function of the rate of interest and is inversely related to the rate of interest. The last determinant is velocity and circulation of money. The demand for money and the velocity of its circulation are inversely related. Higher the velocity of circulation of money, the less is the demand for money and vice versa. Thank you.